and welcome to Respect the Crit. I'm your host, Ian Duncan. My pronouns are he, him. And I'll be playing Sonny Takasi, the ghoul merchant of the wasteland. And joining me this evening, playing with us for your pleasure tonight, please welcome Xavier Trudeau Duchenne. Hello, everybody. How is everybody doing? I'm Xavier. I play Lance Burnett. My pronouns are he, him. And uh, I... Like I just said, I play Lance Burnett. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you play Lance Burnett, right? That's correct? <laughs> yes. Oh, I've good, been told. Good. Wait, oh, this is Justin. I play Lance Burnett. <laughs> Wait, who is that? Who is yeah. that that you play? I missed it. I'm getting Lance Burnett. That's what I'm hearing. Lance Bur Yes, it, it is Lance Burnett. <laughs> it is correct. <laughs> Also playing Lance Burnett, Lance Burnett. Uh, tonight, <laughs> <laughs> joining us is Susan Spinader. Hi, I'm Susan Spinader. I go by she, her, and I'll be playing Lance Burnett. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, no, uh, this just in, I'll be playing, be playing Jerry, who can't talk, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> you have other names uh, in your mouth and on your mind. Yeah, it was too many. <laughs> they got jumbled up. We became one. It was a weird experience. <laughs> <laughs> Our third Lance Burnett for this evening is none other than Jamie Lee Bonez. Hello, I am Jamie, she, her. Um, how fun would it be to do an entire campaign all playing the same character? Uh, but no, <laughs> I will be playing Trish. And of course... We probably couldn't do it without him, though who knows. Please welcome our overseer, Alex Herrera. Hello, I am Alex Herrera. I am the overseer and GM for our Farwell campaign. I am everything, everyone, everything that ever will be, that ever is, that was, and that currently is. I think that's all the time frames. I'm pretty sure I got them all. <laughs> There's only one person you're not, and that's Lance, Lance Burnett. That's <laughs> <laughs> a letdown. <laughs> we are here at the um, edge of our battle, the climax, if you will. We're gonna find out how the rest of this rolls out. So, without any further ado, Alex, please take us away into the Evergreen. Keep the courier safe. That's what the ranger told Trish and the others who had survived the grueling skirmishes along the concrete road of the dam, behind the checkpoint, and a few hundred feet behind them. Trish could still hear some gunfire and explosions going off. No one from her unit was alive, and she had barely managed to kill those legionnaires in time. It was a thought she pushed away very quickly. Don't think about that now. Keep the courier safe. The masked ranger's orders took precedence in her mind. The air on the top of the dam was heavy with the smell of gunpowder, smoke, and blood. Whether she liked it or not, Trish and her fellow troops were now participating in an escort mission across an active battlefield. What was so special about this courier? On the outside, she looked like any other wastelander of the Mojave. But she really did keep odd company. A floating eyebot and a dog with its brain in a jar on full display. The sound of heavy caliber rifles fired directly in front of her shakes her back to this current moment. The courier has taken position behind a badly damaged barrier of his sandbags. The other three members of the squad begin to lay down some covering fire. Trish quickly scans her surroundings, the battlefield, and the growing number of centurions and the other foot soldiers of Caesar's legion now emerging from an access tower 35 feet in front of them. Without hesitation, Trish removes a grenade from her belt, pulls the pin, counts. One, two, three. Trish tosses the grenade with all her might, aiming for the walkway connecting the access tower to the main road of the dam. The explosion rocks the ground and knocks Trish and her other squad mates off their feet. Smoke clears and Trish slowly shakes off the ringing in her ears and manages to pull herself up. The concrete road clears, smoke vanishes, and Trish is able to see only one figure standing, holding their rifle in the ready position. The courier, somehow, was not affected by the blast, moving as if she had been born with that rifle. 
the courier executes the legionnaires easily and quickly reloads her rifle in the most fluid motion. Trish rallies behind the courier with a seemingly endless amount of newfound respect and a slight tinge of fear. The squad continues to escort the courier to the edge of the roadway. With almost no more resistance, the courier looks back at the squad and Trish smiles at them, giving them a nod of recognition and respect. The ambient sounds of war behind them are suddenly drowned out by an unfamiliar sound. Almost like two power generators turning on simultaneously, a large centurion wielding two rippers or motorized handheld chainsaws leaps off the mountain path and onto the concrete road. Keep moving. We'll stop them from following you, Trish says without even thinking. The courier nods and heads down the shattered road towards Caesar's camp. The other three NCR troops look to Trish as if she should be the one giving orders. Trish, what are your orders? Uh, Trish is first going to tell her men and women, stay close, and is going to continue the barrage of grenades and, and try to knock this thing off of the dam if possible. Stay close and keep the fire going. The NCR troops look to Trish almost with a sense of regained valor. They take positions near some nearby uh, debris, barricades or half-destroyed barricades and begin to open fire. The centurion takes shots to the shoulder, to the arm, to the chest. Uh, doesn't seem to be going down. Then Trish pulls out one more grenade off of her belt, pulls the grenade off without even thinking and pulls the pin at the same time, throwing it at the feet of the centurion. Another explosion rocks this dam. As the smoke clears, Trish is able to regain herself back to her feet. Her troops seem in good shape, maybe a little rocked by the explosion, some soot covering their face. But what catches her attention in her eye is a pool of blood that just seems to pour out of every hole and wound, continually expanding underneath that centurion's body, which now rests on the once gray concrete. Trish and the survivors now stand, weapons drawn at the ready. The wind howls and mixes with the now slowly ending sound of gunfire. And all across every active NCR radio, those on the people who are standing here and those on the bodies of the fallen comrades across the dam, a song of victory plays. Words come through and it's obvious the courier has finished her mission, but Trish already stopped listening. Instead of celebrating with her troops, Trish collects herself, slumps down against one of the concrete walls on the edge of the dam and slides down to sit. Laughter tears and heavy breathing all escape her as she removes her NCR helmet and runs her hand through her hair. This feeling, she thought. Victory. It's something she hasn't felt, at least not on this scale. But Trish and Victory would become very close friends. Victory would come once again for Trish when she would be awarded with a medal for her service at the Battle of Hoover Dam. Victory would come for Trish when she would be hand-selected by the NCR Rangers. But the most important victory of all would be when Trish tastes victory in finding the love of her life. We cut to the moment Buzzsaw reveals his namesake weaponry. Two buzzsaws on his hands, which extend outwards, probably about, about two inches away. So we have six raiders, one buzzsaw boss. You have five boys. One of the boys is Ernest, still alive, still kicking. So after the grenade exploded, when the, the raider suicide bombed himself, there is now an active fire in the top half section of this zone. Which means, if a creature ends its turn in this zone, it must, it must make a perception athletics check with a DC of 1 to avoid taking three combat dice worth of fire damage. Trish, you are first. 
Oh boy. I knew that I was first and I was not ready, but here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so I think seeing this fire erupt, Trish is going to yell out, fall back, fall back, uh, and is going to try to fire on Buzzsaw as she's moving back. Looking to get 12 or lower. Well, oh, <laughs> oh dang. <laughs> it's okay. In the hustle and bustle, you know, she just doesn't have have the aim that she needs. It's a little off. She she sticks up the she sticks up her gun, takes the ready position, fires. A little off. Buzzsaw still standing there, kind of grinning like an idiot. Uh, now, because you're looking at him, you get a much clearer description of Buzzsaw. He's a lot heavier set than some of the other raiders. Like there's some meat on his bones. And he's got like the mohawk cut, but it's a red, red haired, a red headed mohawk, kind of unkept, just kind of wild. A couple scars on his head as well. He's no stranger to combat. And uh, the fact that you miss seems to kind of just invigorate him a little bit. With his buzzsaw arms. Yeah. <laughs> That's how he got a haircut. <laughs> let me get it, let me get it clear. He does have hands. There's just an apparatus that <laughs> right. has this extending oh, okay. bus on both sides. Yeah, it doesn't have bus okay. on both sides. <laughs> I was going to say, man, it would be really hard to pee. With yeah, you wouldn't be able to pee. You wouldn't bus be able to masturbate. Things. You wouldn't be able to do anything. <laughs> There's ways. Not with a bus off. <laughs> Trish, you still have a movement action, I believe? Yes, I am going to fall back. Where? Fall back to which zone? The cathedral. And if possible, I don't want to go in. I want to stay by the door and like usher other people. Uh, you also commanded the boys to follow you, correct? Yes, I don't want them to burn. Okay, so on their turn, they'll they'll move. We go now to Buzzsaw. I, I would say he goes for one of the boys. Cherry, can you roll me a d6 in the oh, no. tail, please, to see which one goes after? <laughs> if it's a six, it's going to be Not uh, the boys. Ernest. No! He's the last named the one. It's not honest. <laughs> Is this what leadership feels like? I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Buzzsaw, true to his name, walks up to one of the boys who's getting up off the ground and dusting himself off, hearing Trisha's commands, picks up his gun, turns around and sees Buzzsaw come at him with his uh, extended Buzzsaw attack. That too is a hit. Oh, I believe. Oof, 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 That's oof, some oof, pretty oof, good damage, yeah. too. Yeah, so the six is one damage and an effect. Oh, God, okay. Oh, he's dead. Two, four, yeah. six damage total oh. and the effect. F's in the chat. F's in the chat for the boys. Yeah. <laughs> unnamed boy, unnamed boy number one, picks up his gun, turns around, and he just gets, it's like our camera looks through his point of view as he, we see his hand reach out to grab the gun, and then he hears the revving behind him and he turns around th- and we look through his eyes just to see the buzzsaw we see buzzsaw himself kind of smile and, s- and have this kind of teeth showing this huge grin as he sticks one fist outwards and the buzzsaw extends out with this little mechanical arm that extends going through our camera view blood fills the, the uh, eyeball or like our view and we pull out back over his shoulder as he pulls the buzzsaw out uh, he cut this boy's head clear from the eyeballs to the back of the head clear off he moves into jerry's zone as he turns around his hands out it's kind of extended outwards gladiator style ah you like that (laughs) and that's gonna be his turn jerry it's your turn he walks out of that zone with a railway rifle aimed straight at him (laughs) (laughs) and as jerry pulls the trigger Theo was going to propose to his girl. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, you gave him a name. Why did you give him a name? <laughs> He's already dead, so that's it's yeah. fine now. Theo. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Here's hoping I hit. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's one action point generated for the crew. Okay. Damage. So seven damage on legs? On his right leg. Is there enough, what's the effect for your railway rifle? Breaking. And how does the group feel about me spending that one action point I just got? Do, do it. it. Do it, do okay. it. Anyone can do it, yeah. <laughs> Spent. Oh, I got it. Is that hit? Oh, That's nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's roll 10 more of those D6s. Eight damage, please roll a D20 to see where you hit him. This is his left arm. As soon as you hit him with the second railway spike, it goes through his arm and shatters the armor. I would say he's unable to use the something I was saving up for, which is his one-two buzzsaw attack. The buzzsaw on the left arm is disabled, but he still has the right one. Ooh. Cool. And that's that was for Theo. 
<laughs> Eight full damage. That was a fuck ton. And then I'm going to use a minor action to move. <laughs> Jerry enters the residential cluster. Numerous small to medium shacks and structures of wood and sheet metal can be found in this zone and can be used as cover from all sides. Any melee attacks made by a creature in this zone have increased complication range, 16 through 20. Nice. Oh, pretty Ooh. good. So as Jerry kind of takes cover and in, in, like darts after she fires two of these railway spikes, I would say she reloads it one more time, realizing she only has a few left. She kind of backtracks into these like these really narrow alleyways of buildings. I mean, technically just from being in here, you're in cover. Sunny, you are in the center. You are you see six raiders, you see Buzzsaw, uh, you saw him kill a boys. What are you doing? Yeah, I mean I see Trish like fall back and there's there's this fire and then like I see Buzzsaw like going after Jerry and I just sort of like torn like uh, 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 seeing everyone go in opposite directions. I'm just gonna try and pop one of these uh, raiders here in the middle with me. I'm gonna pull out a 44 Magnum. I'm gonna take a minor action to got 10 millimeter pistol in one hand and from his hip he pulls the big iron <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's gonna try and shoot uh, at one of these raiders whichever one is, is closest I'd say they're pretty equally spread apart so it doesn't matter you can pick one off yeah so my targets 11 uh, here we go that's hit one it, hit one, it is. one. Yeah. nice so six damage <laughs> and it's oh. uh, Vicious, which I think just does an extra point of damage. And you know how much HP this raider has? Seven. So. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> so you have the guns. Sunny looks at both of them. Has or first has the ten millimeter, then pulls out the almost like the Joker from the first original Batman. Just pulls the gun out, <laughs> looks at it, and he gets this like really gnarly smile on his face. Cocks the hammer so it makes that like clink. And the first thing he shoots at. I'd say he aims at Buzz off first, and he's like, mm. then he looks, and he sees this raider kind of, like, looking around, like, looking to cause trouble, and he knows, no. Oh, can we say he's running at me? <laughs> he's, oh, like, yeah. running at Sunny? Yeah, it's like, yeah. he goes to, like, aim over at Buzzsaw, like, ah, Jerry! And then he looks, and this guy's just like, ah! I would say, not even, don't even have to roll where you hit him. I'd say you hit him, like, square in the sternum. The force of this hand cannon kind of rocks you back a little because you're not used to this type of weapon. You're like, whoa. But neither is this raider at getting hit in the sternum with a bullet of this caliber. Just, poof, it's the critical hit as our camera focuses on him and his ragdoll body flies backwards, I'd say, <laughs> back into the center area where Trish and the boys originally had their little kind of garrison point where they were holding their ground earlier and he falls right into the center alongside other fallen raiders and fallen boys. Uh, excellent move. You've killed one of the six raiders, leaving only five. Anything else, then you want to move out of the... Uh, I the cannot. I spent. It's a minor action to pull out the magnum. Okay, I need you to make perception athletics check, please. DC of one. My target is perception six, which is pretty good, but my athletics... Wah, wah, single goose egg. So six. So six it is. Here we go. That's a 19. <clears throat> I'd say some embers wick off of this massive flame that's growing now and catch you on one of your arms. Singe you. That's four. Four damage? Physical damage. From embers? Yeah. God damn it. You know what? They The complication being that they light like part of your clothes on fire, which is where the extra damage comes from. Just like... Trying to pat it out. All right. The remaining boys and Ernest. Their minor action is to move. They move into the opening of the cathedral. I came up with names for them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's hear them. All right. Okay, it's Roxy. Roxy, she's a boy. Mm, I like that. Junior. Junior. Oh. Senior. Senior. <laughs> <laughs> and Ernest. Ernest. And then Theo was and the guy who died. Right? Down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Roxy Junior Senior. <laughs> junior it. and uh, they are family. It's oh no. <laughs> no. And Roxy was uh, who Theo was going to propose to. <gasps> no, Susan, what are you doing? Everyone is here. My heart, oh my, my heart hurts. <laughs> All right, the group will take positions at the door and turn around and unload on the uh, five remaining raiders who are scattered across. 
Oh, and they generate an <gasps> yeah. action point for you guys. <laughs> so five damage. Not enough to kill it, but man, is it close. It's like a wall of bullets. And one raider just gets pelted with these bullets. You hear him scream in pain. And, ah! and he's still standing, and the boys take position uh, at the front of the cathedral. Brings up the six raiders. Or, I'm sorry, the five raiders. The injured one obviously turns his attention to the boys and will rush them. He will use tire iron, and I will burn an action point because I want to get rid of some of these boys, unfortunately. Two hits, so I generate an action point. Three damage is not enough to kill a boy, but it is enough to hurt him. As Which this, one? Uh, why don't you get, roll a d4 for me, please? That would be Roxy. Oh no! She just lost Theo! <laughs> <laughs> they can marry in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Torso! She just gets a tie iron straight to the chest. You can hear steel clank against bone and muscle. You probably hear something snap like a rib. The air just gets knocked out of her. <gasps> The battle is now up in your face as that raider is in the same zone as, as the rest of you, Jamie. And then from there, another raider will go. This one will also rush into the zone with a tire iron. Uh, miss! This big swing with this tire iron. Trish is able to kind of parry it using her quick movements out of the way. Uh, another one is going to stay in the zone and take aim at one of the boys as well. Firing the gun off missing third raider is gonna go he will run into the zone as well tire ire one of the boys and i'm gonna spend an action point because like i said i'm trying to get rid of these guys oh that's a complication but a hit nonetheless that's four damage you mind rolling that d4 again susan no no oh ernest oh no oh. <laughs> ernie and he will be taking it to the torso as well weren't there two on lance Oh, we're you're right. Under I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, they're yeah. on the ground. So they're going to spend their move action to stand up. This one is anyways. And he's going to attack Lance, which I will spend an action point to hit him. Sorry, Lance. Okay, Lance. And this guy does hit you. Oh. That's six damage. Right arm. Uh, so unless you have any armor, this is going to be a critical hit. No, I do not have armor. Uh, he's left-handed. His boxing glove is on the left. <laughs> <laughs> this only makes you stronger, doesn't it? I just hit my nerd rage, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm very close to dying. Oh, okay, here we go. Critical hit on the arm. You drop any object held in that hand and the arm is broken or otherwise unable to move. You cannot perform any actions using that arm by itself or alongside your other arm. And uh, answers my question I had if, uh, about if I could use a shotgun with a boxing glove, but I guess no. That's <laughs> out of the question. So... <laughs> so this raider gets up off the ground, sees you coming, and just f kind of does that twirl with the lead pipe and gives you one swing. Yeah, he ba basically, I picture Lance brings his right arm up to block the, the steel pipe and it just breaks it. Everyone can hear it. Ah! Oh my god. And the, the shotgun drops on the ground. I, I rolled a complication for that one. I'm gonna say, as you drop the shotgun, it fires at the raider. So I want you to I want you to roll an attack as if you were shooting with a shotgun. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That'll be a three, which is success. Please roll the damage for the shotgun. Uh, I I'm assuming I can't add more bullets. No, no. It's <laughs> yeah, not. No. It doesn't like pump itself. Like no. <laughs> no. Okay. That's four four damage. Right in the chest. Uh, ah! <gasps> Jesus. A gaping wound underneath, like I would say, his lower abdomen, just blood gushing out after he breaks your arm. He had this smile to the shotgun blast, it took it right out of him. He's like, What the fuck? As he looks at the gun just sitting on the ground with smoke coming out of it, uh, you are there with your right hand just hanging helplessly at your side, but the boxing glove is still in your hand, uh, and the adrenaline pumps through you. The nerd rage perk is activated. There's one more raider. I believe this one would be going towards Sunny, and he comes running at him, twirling his lead pipe as well. That five is a hit. Four damage to the left arm. I do have armor. So you three take three damage. damage. Right. Correct. Yep. Got it. So he comes at you. Ow! You hear this loud ringing sound of steel hitting flesh. Bah! 
and he just laughs in your face. <laughs> Come on, Goofy, stay down! How many of them stayed in the zone? The one who fired the gun will get out of the way as the fire spreads a little. Now this is the one that hit Xavier, or Lance, I'm sorry. Success, another complication. <laughs> shotgun <laughs> fires again. No, no. <laughs> we could say that he trips over the shotgun so that he's prone uh, at the start of Lance's turn, if that's acceptable. I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, like that meant getting blasted in the... <laughs> in the gut and then trying to... In the, in the gut with a shotgun, yeah. I'm gonna hit him with the shotgun. So he'd fire, like, like gun blade style. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the one that hit Sunny... Come on, burn, motherfucker. Fails there miserably. Can he catch fire from me being on fire? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that because that's like a nice complication. He goes to hit me and it just, and it just spread. I'm panicking, like, trying to put it out. He whacks me and it just, like, spreads. <laughs> He's got like gas on him from the bike or something. Oh, perfect! Ooh. Yeah, yeah. He's the raider. All as soon as this little ember jumps off of Sunny and lands on the raider's like leathers, you just see it go up instantly, like a paper game tossed into fire. The raider's screaming and panicking, kind of doing that stutter step as he's on fire. Uh, Lance, it's your turn, buddy. So I think I'll do unarmed with my foot on the oh, on yeah. the head of that person that just tripped on the shot. Oh, so you're aiming, man. <sighs> Damn it. <laughs> so I looked up prone. When enemies are prone at close range, they reduce the difficulty of attacks by one. Ooh, so to a so minimum of zero. It's back to one. <laughs> so it was at two, right? Because you, you're aiming. But if you're aiming for the head, it's now at one. Yeah. I, I must aim for the head. All right. yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to take the zero. I'm going to aim for the head. <laughs> Unarmed is two damage rating. Uh, right now, my melee damage rating is at plus two. So that would be four. And because I'm in nerd rage, all my <laughs> I add one uh, combat die to all my so attacks. five. It's five. It's so five. So five. Yeah. Back to five. Back to shotgun damage. Oh wow. my god! With a wow. foot. This is your yeah. foot. Yeah. <laughs> all right, roll it. Oh yeah. Okay. <gasps> you oh, dang. One action point. You guys have two action points now. Uh, he's no, he's dead. You don't even have to tell me. <laughs> yeah. Look at how much damage that is. Oh. That's, uh, that's, five. that's five. That's five. To the head. Yeah. That's a critical damage Ooh. to the head. To five. So Lance. Walks, not even have to walk up, he just turns around to see the guy who just broke his arm. Uh, everything is red in Lance's vision. Describe to me how do you kill this raider with your foot? When all that kind of chaos happens with the with the shotgun blast and the guy kind of trips over it and falls probably like holding his belly to like face down, Lance lets his right arm like limp to the side of his, his, uh, his body. Uh, takes a step forward towards the guy on the ground and flips him over with his foot. As soon as he gets eye contact from him, he just like, glares at him and raises his foot and just drops it on his face. Oh, crunch. Cut to black. So Lance manages to kind of, he sees the flames getting wilder and he sees the, I would say that now Lance, you can see the trail of gas. There's not even a trail. The lakes, the small lakes of gasoline, which are all over the central plaza, are beginning to ignite. Um, so you have a very good idea that, hey, this entire zone is going to be up in flames in probably about one more round. Everything, this whole place, this section is going to go up in flames. So that's the end of Lance's turn. Emmett and Cassie. We'll start with Emmett because he has a fucking missile launcher and I need to use the last rocket he has there or missile he has. Emmett sees Buzzsaw in another zone. He's still going to take a shot at this guy, so increase the difficulty by one, so that's two DC. Ooh. So he takes aim, and he's like, ah, stop moving. Fires. <laughs> Complication will be that he blows up a building <gasps> no. in the residential cluster. Hey, Jerry. Uh, yeah? You want to give me, let's call it agility... Let's just call it Agility Athletics. Ugh. Oh, dang. Mm. Do you have any luck points you want to use, maybe? No, I used them all last time. We do have one action point. We still have one action point. Uh, yeah, building's falling on top of me. Do it. <laughs> Spent. Oh, there it yes. is. Yeah. Camera is over Emmett's shoulder as he fires the rocket. We follow it. It zooms past Buzzsaw, who kind of just sees it or hears it and kind of tilts his head forward. So that it goes behind his head and hits, I would say, a nice chunk of the residential cluster. Sheet metal flies out, wood catches on fire, 
and it's like these tiny, uh, there's this tiny wave of shrapnel from the sheet metal goes flying out. And we see now from Gary's perspective, she kind of has her head down, shreds of sheet metal flying through wood, flying past Jerry, making almost like ninja stars in a way of these cuts and these slices as we hear things getting just ripped. Finally, smoke clears, rubble finishes its descent from the sky, and you hear Emmett from the from the back. Hey, hey, sorry, Jer! <laughs> Can't be seen through the rubble, but there's a middle finger going up. <laughs> Emmett finishes that, tosses the rocket on the ground, pulls out a 10 millimeter pistol, and moves into the zone with Buzzsaw. Cassie from the rooftop is going to try and take out the last raider who is, I believe, there's still one in the fire zone. Oh! Yeah. yeah! Action point for you guys. She's so dope. This one, I believe, escaped the fire and was not harmed, but he now has taken five. Five? Is that, yeah, is that a critical injury? Oh, shit, it is on his torso. Oh. Is it? Goes through the armor. He begins to bleed heavily. At the end of each of his subsequent turns, he suffers two physical damage, ignoring all damage resistance. So Cassie pegs this guy right in the shoulder. I would say above the heart. Hits like a, a, a very important artery. He just goes, ah, ah, and he looks up. This stupid bitch. And he's like growling at the mouth. And then he lets go of it for a second, and it just keeps coming out. And he's like, ah, ah, <laughs> trying to stop the blood, but it just will not stop. So he is bloody. It bleeding. is Seven Samurai. Yeah. <laughs> Top of the order, Trish. You are in front of the cathedral. There are two raiders in your zone attacking your boys. And one is prone. Ah, yes, one is on the ground. Well, Trish is going to, after ushering everyone into this zone, is going to aim and fire at the unproned raider. Got it. Okay. Six is a hit. Oh, my God. Four damage and two two effects. Vicious. So it's six. Oh, this guy, this guy's fucked. This guy's dead. This guy's obliterated. Trish, there's it's chaos around you. And chaos in front of you. As there's now two raiders in here duking it out. One kind of runs past you with the lead pipe attacking one of the boys. And you quickly spin around. I would say cinematically... Not even, it's almost like wanted, whipping the gun and firing mid whip. Uh, bullets, for some reason, aims downward, and in typical and famous Fallout fashion, you strike this raider's right leg clear off, flies off from the impact of the bullet. <laughs> he just screams in horror as he loses his footing because he's missing one of his legs, and grabs the stump, looks up at you, and ceases to exist on this mortal coil as he dies. Uh, you want to stay in this zone, or do you want to move more? Uh, no, I'm going to stay right here. Okay. Buzzsaw! He's going to turn around, see that there's a, a dude in his zone, kind of shake off the debris from his hand that's been destroyed, and attack Emmett. Just when we were beginning to like him. Yeah. Yeah. And he's going to burn an action, one of his personal action points. Oh! <laughs> oh let's go! Oh, oh, well, he redeemed himself. He can go now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he generates three action points. Oh, that's a crit. We got to respect that crit. So it's just four physical damage. The left arm. This is not the leg. Huh? <laughs> uh, Bussaw will remain in the zone. Glad he stayed in that zone because this is a medium range rifle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pick up the ri railway rifle and then like look over some rubble and aim it at Buzzsaw. I have three spikes left. I got it. <laughs> so six damage, right? <gasps> In the head! Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> that is the head. I will tell you that he has zero armor on his head. He is mo momentarily dazed and loses his normal actions in his next turn, though he may still spend action points for extra action as normal. Further, you cannot see clearly and increase the difficulty of all tests which rely on vision by two. I was thinking that it like, like just sliced the top of his head and now his mohawk is a two hawk. <laughs> oh yeah, it, just, it rips his skull like right down the middle. So it's like there's blood coming out from like the front and the back. And his yeah. head, you see this tufts of, of red hair just fall on the ground. And he kind of like grabs his head, uh, looks behind him and sees you poke out of the rubble and you just see the growl. Like you can, you can, you can hear the growl, but you see his face is full of anger. Like, there's so much he wants to do. And how many action points do we have? You guys have one. Should I use it to take another shot? Do it. Yeah, have fun. Have fun. Yeah. 
<laughs> this OP weapon. Right, we gotta use it on the OP <laughs> boss. <laughs> Yes! Oh, it is. Uh, and an action and point! An action action point. point. Wow. Thank you. Nice. So he turns around, growls, makes eye contact with Jerry as she pulls the trigger again. I would say you effectively destroyed both his buzzsaws. Oh. Wow. So both of his arms are now missing the buzzsaw, but his right arm is broken because you did over, over five damage to it. The spike flies. We Our camera follows it. The, the crit in that the railway spike not only shatters his bu the last remaining buzzsaw but goes through i would say the elbow joint rendering his arm useless at that point just <laughs> the force kind of makes him tilt to the side a little and he looks up but you feel that he's coming for you regardless of if Emmett's behind him or not he does not care Hey Wastelanders, don't have a whole lot to announce for this mid-roll, just wanted to give you a quick reminder that we've only got three, maybe four more episodes of our Fallout adventure left, and when that story wraps up, we'll probably do a sort of like post-mortem where everyone sort of like talks about what they liked about the game and what it was like playing and uh, give feedback and stuff like that. We'll probably put a thing out uh, if you have any questions for us. Um, or questions for Alex about running the game, something like that. We'll do an episode like that. And then we'll jump right back into our Star Wars story, picking up where we left off. So if you feel like you need to catch up with that or you haven't even heard it yet, go back, check out some of those episodes, uh, get yourself caught up to what was going on in there so that when we do come back to it, you'll be all ready to go to jump right back in with our fearless fringers in their adventure a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. And while we're still doing our Fallout adventure, we still have that discount code that our friends at Modifius have generously supplied for us. If you go to modifius.net slash respect the crit or modifius.us if you prefer US shipping rates, and enter the code RTC10 at checkout, you can get 10% off any Fallout 2D20 stuff. That's uh, the books, that's all the GM tools. Uh, they have Nuka Cola bottle caps, which are really cool. So, yeah, if you're looking to jump into this universe and you want looking to get some of those materials, just uh, use RTC10. That's RTC10 at checkout. Hey, also, now that it's the beginning of the year, it's a good time to reach out to your local representatives, state representatives, and federal representatives, and make sure what their position is and what legislation that they are pushing for or perhaps pushing against. Uh, we have tools and links to help you find that out and to help you contact them and make scripts and stuff. You can find a lot of that stuff on our Discord. Links to that in our Twitter bio. Uh, yeah, so come and join our Discord and get that information so that you can be informed. I would like to challenge listeners of this show to make sure that they know whether or not their representatives are pushing for progressive reforms, and if they aren't, to let them know that they should be. And for listeners of the show to seek out progressive candidates in their area and in their communities because there are going to be midterm elections coming up in this year and that's something to definitely pay attention to if you have any feedback or questions about the show or for any of us please feel free to hit us up you can reach us on social media you can shoot an email to us drop us a review on apple podcasts not only do we get to see what you thought about the show, but it also helps others find the show and really helps us out as well. We love to hear your feedback and we love hearing from you. So yeah, thank you again to our friends at Modifius Entertainment and thank all of you for listening, for downloading and for leaving us your feedback. That's it. Enjoy the rest of the episode. All right. Sonny. I'm gonna take a shot at uh, the the raider in the zone that I'm in. Um, I believe this is the one that 
Cassie shot? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. This guy erupts in flame in front of me. Sonny's able to, like, pet out the fire, cocks the, the magnum, looks around, finds this other raider who's, who's, like, holding himself from getting shot from Cassie, looking up at the church, looks down the barrel and fires. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, got it. And then the damn lodge. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, so one, two, three, four. Describe to me how you murderize yeah. this remaining raider. We see, like, we see Sonny, and he's, uh, like, he's patting himself off. He aims, and then, like, we cut to that guy, and he just goes looking up at Cass, and he's like, you bit, and then his head just like, explodes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we see uh. Sonny in the, the background, like, he looks up at Cassie and, like, gives a thumbs up. He's going to shout to Lance, and he's like, I'm going to help Jerry! And then he's going to book it out of that zone into the, the next no zone over. Okay. Lance, I believe you're the only one in there, but it is not your turn. It is the boys! The boys. Uh, and the boys see this raider on his stomach trying to get up. They're going to beat the shit out of him. There's no way around it. They're going to grab makeshift objects from, like, nearby rocks. They're going to grab, like... Uh, rebar that they see hanging out, they're just gonna start beating the shit out of them. Difficulty zero. So. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. But right? yeah, they yeah. generate action points they, for us. They did generate an action point. There you go. Oh, shit. That's four. This guy's fuck. This guy's destroyed. There's no way. It's just this scene where our camera sees the, the raider get up and then he's surrounded by shadows. As he looks up, he gets a nice big chunk of concrete to the face. <laughs> Blood scatters or spatters on the ground. Some teeth fall out. He starts coughing. <coughs> puts his hand up no oh, wait and then you see Ernest kind of come through the come through the group piece of rebar in hand and he just shoves it through this guy's throat just Ugh! and the raider looks up and Ernest doesn't break his view from looking at this raider in the eyes does not break his view stays on him until the raider's eyes roll to the back of his head and is there's no longer life in him and Ernest looks at Trish and kind of nods and ushers the rest of the boys into the cathedral as they go into the, you know, check their wounds and to ensure that everyone is safe inside. All of the raiders are dead. Lance, fire is spreading quick. Let me roll, let me roll just a, like a perception thing. Buzzsaw is in the clustered homes. You see, and you see Jerry kind of, you see her pull away from the, as she's taking cover and you can clearly see she's trying to reload from your angle, but you can also see that the zone that Jerry is in is now the residential cluster is on fire, and it's spreading faster because it's wood. It's it's old wood that's just crackling, and you can see that some little flares are coming up as they're like burning quicker and quicker. Jerry needs to get out of there, or she will be engulfed in flames. Lance is gonna kind of that'll that'll ground him, bring him back to his senses a bit. Spenny, and he just yells, Spenny, and he yells towards the cathedral. And he just yells, Fire, Spenny, get your ass over here. Uh, through the the murmurs of the citizens, they all look to one another looking for Spenny. And you see out of one of these little single room occupancy structures, Spenny comes out with this large uh, pre-war firefighter coat. Uh, no, There's no buttons, there's no latches or anything on it. And he comes running through and he's got this kind of uh, pre-war fire extinguisher that's never been used. And he's like, don't worry, I modified it! He's gonna run past you. Uh, so I would say that during the boy's turn, Spenny is gonna go as well. He's part of the boys technically now. And uh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I specified I moved out of the zone, right? Yes, yeah, you're in the cathedral now. Emmett and Cassie. So Emmett, uh, he's out of missiles. He's full of surprises. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got the 10 millimeter and he's gonna fire at, uh, at Buzzsaw while still screaming. All right, Jerry, you should probably get out of here. No, duh. <laughs> he better not take my kill. <laughs> no chaosing. Don't you fucking chaos. so hard. <laughs> oh. So you guys have three action points now. Emmett fires. Hits Buzzsaw on the left arm. I would say the back. The bullet goes clean through. Ah! Blood pouring out of all of his wounds at this point. He's, his breathing gets heavier. He does not relent. He still stays focused on getting to Jerry. Cassie can try and aim, but that's one. That's three zones away. 
Woo! She's going to try it anyways. She's going to burn a point from your guys' pool, unless you tell her no. Go ahead. Go for Allow it. it. Yeah. <laughs> she better hit, though. Nice. Oh! Nice. That nice. is a crit. She needs both successes to hit him. Cassie shoots her hunting rifle from the top of the cathedral. The bullet strikes Buzzsaw, I would say, in the upper back portion. Torso damage, but his armor absorbs some of it. But his focus still remains on Jerry. Trish, it is your turn. You are, I want to say, two zones away. But this is the start of round there are, yeah, round three. The central plaza is engulfed in flames. The entire zone is up. As Lance steps into the cathedral next to you, Trish, you look behind him and you see that the fire has just spread across. Okay, so there's no getting to... There's no getting through that zone unless I want to take some sort of fire damage. It's going to be... You automatically take three combat dice of damage as you move through, is what I'm saying, because the fire is too intense. All right. Let's go. I'm going through? As Lance comes through, Trish is going to realize that we're missing two. We're missing two people. And she's going to rush through the flames to get through the zone. And just to paint the picture... Trish, in her NCR Ranger armor, charges through an entire zone of flame. So you sprint out of the cathedral and you end up in the main thoroughfare. Some some singe marks, I'd say, on your neck where you're in your, and maybe the back of your head where you're exposed a little, but uh, the burns are nothing too damaged. Not too bad compared to what could have happened. And as, as you see the situation in front of you now being clear of the flames, you see Buzzsaw is going to march right up to Jerry. He doesn't care that you're behind cover, and he's going to grab you with his one good arm. He's going to grab you by the throat. So let's call it Strength Athletics, because he's just trying to grab Jerry by the throat with his one good hand. So I have two successes, so it's a DC of two for Jerry. And can I propose that, since he's trying to grab, that's definitely Strength, but I'm trying to dodge and get out of the way, that'd be Agility. See, Agility Athletics, you believe, is what it should be for you? I can see that. That works for me. Okay. It's the same. It'll be the same uh, DC for me either way. Ten and ten, so it doesn't matter. It wouldn't have Not mattered. Not for me. <laughs> um, I got zero in athletics and seven in agility. Uh, how many action points do we have? Two. I'm gonna use one to buy a dice. <laughs> Fail. Gotta respect that crit. We gotta respect that crit, and it's for Buzzsaw. So Jerry, probably because she couldn't imagine this happening or because she doesn't believe it's happening. She struggles but cannot break free of Buzzsaw as he grabs her with his left arm, his only good arm left, with a, in a chokehold essentially, just grabbing her by her throat, picking her off up the ground. His eyes just full of mania, of insanity, hysteria, maybe because he's lost so much blood, all the damage or because he's seen all of his men die here today. The eyes still hold some sort of evil behind them. As Jerry struggles to breathe and tries, uh, she hears his voice drown everything else out as he says, You're gonna die with me, little girl. Mm. He licks his lips as he squeezes just a little harder. Jerry can feel her windpipe closing. Uh, That's gonna be his action as he holds you, Jerry. It is your turn. In the panic, I'm going to say I dropped the rail rifle, but as that voice drowns out everything else, in the back of her head, she hears, shoot straight, Jer. And she goes for her pipe gun from her dad, her powerful pipe gun, and she has quick draw, so I don't even have to use a minor action to draw this. And I'm going to shoot it. And I'm going to use an action point. (laughs) I'm sorry, guys. Last (laughs) one. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, I got it. I got it. <laughs> you're not aiming. It, it's it's random, right, where you're shooting? Yeah. Four damage. Depending on where this is, it could be a completely different situation. Right arm. The one without armor. It happens in a flash. Jerry's lifted up, <sighs> struggling to breathe. Buzzsaw's words drown everything out around her, but she hears her father's voice. Shoot straight, Jerry. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. And without even thinking, the railway rifle drops to the ground. Buzzsaw's attention is distracted as his eyes dart down to the noise. 
They dart forward because another noise rings out three times as Jer goes for her powerful pipe pistol and aims at his at Buzzsaw's broken right arm, firing three times in succession. Buzzsaw looks in amusement at first, kind of with a half chuckle, as suddenly he feels his left hand's fingers let go. Jer falls to the ground on her knees, grabbing her throat, looks up, Buzzsaw still standing, towering over her, but swaying back and forth. A quick breeze blows by and he falls backwards, slamming himself onto numerous pieces of rebar that are sticking out of the ground, sharpened pieces of sheet metal and wood as he is impaled by multiple different spiky objects. <coughs> he begins coughing blood. <coughs> And as he's dying, Jerry picks up the railway rifle, and as she's leaving the zone, stepping over him, she says to him, like, voice breaking up, You're gonna die here, little boy. Uh, Emmett kind of sees Jerry coming towards him and he gets closer. Hey, you, you need a hand? Ugh, no. He, he's nothing. He's dead. Rubbing at her neck. <laughs> Emmett looks back as Jerry says this and sees the fire sweep over him. <gasps> as he tries to scream out in pain, but some of those protrusions have gone straight through his lungs, not allowing him to scream in pain as he is engulfed completely in flame. Those outside the cathedral... Sonny, Jerry, and Emmett are surrounded by flame on both sides. It's spread throughout the residential block. The plaza is torched in gasoline, and the fire, I'd say, is giving off slight radiation. All of the bike's cores are exposed, uh, and they're just outputting consistent radiation. The fuel is leaking. Uh, like uh, Hydraulic fluid is out there. And it sounds like there's somebody screaming, fighting, but there's no more villain. There's no more enemies, and Sunny kind of takes attention to one corner of the area, and this tiny pre-war uh, fire extinguisher appears to be outputting this huge amount of cooling. Just <laughs> the force is strong, and there's this frail, short little dude who seems to be full of life in this oversized firefighter coat, spraying on one side. And able to maintain control over the flames that are in the central plaza, at least. Uh, Sunny sees Spenny continually doing bursts of the extinguisher. And you can hear him kind of shouting to himself, I don't know how much this fucking has, but wow! Firing off continuously. Then a matter of five minutes, Spenny has extinguished the flames of the central plaza. But the uh, residential cluster is gone which is the majority of the housing for those uh, citizens of St. Mark's. The party sees that the plaza fire has been extinguished. Spenny's container is emptied. Well, hey, I guess I'm out. Tosses it aside. Hey, so, uh, hey, you know, uh, fire's out. I knew I could count on you, Spenny. And he's, uh, while he's saying that, he's kind of like jury rigging a, a splint for himself, like with, with his other one hand. Uh, and he he looks around. What's the what's the name of the uh, mayor here again? Oh, uh, Sam. Sam. He's Sam. looking for Sam. Sam will come forward as well as like a handful of community leaders that come out. I would say those of you who are outside are now in in the cathedral main room, main floor as well. Cassie comes down from the walkway. You hear some of the guards up there like, "Hell yeah, good job!" <laughs> Giving her high fives, and she's like, "Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, no problem." She's been there's like sweat under her armpits. There's like her face is all sweaty. You She's did like, a hell of a job. Good shooting. Thanks. I was just gonna say you guys did. I mean, and she looks at Jerry. 
I could have sworn you were dead. Not a scratch on me. He wasn't anything. Emmett. Rubbing at her neck. Yeah, Emmett, Emmett, <laughs> Emmett looks behind and over her. I mean, you got bruises on your... And he stops himself, puts his hands up. Nope, never mind. You did good. You did great. Good work. Uh, and for the first time, it seems like he corrects himself. He catches himself. And rather than destroy a moment, simply just admires the moment itself. Sam, the mayor, steps forward and looks at Lance. Uh, one of the doctors can look at that for you if you'd like. No, and I can't wait. Uh, you lost a lot of good people. Just make sure that the injured ones get treated first. Of course, they, they're, they're on it as we speak. He looks at Jerry. I have to thank you. And then to Trish and you. Whatever you did to those volunteers... Although it did make them hardened, in all scriptures it says that at certain times men must hold the sword in order to bring peace. I think this lesson was learned by them whether you taught it or not, but I think you had something to do with it, so my numerous thanks is extended to both of you. Then he looks to Sonny, Lance, and the rest of the group, and to everyone else as well, of course. If it wasn't for you all, there would be children without mothers and fathers, there'd be siblings missing from families. There would be there would be more death. I promised you supplies, food, but I am aware that you are searching for someone, so I can give you something else. And he's gonna look to Ernest, and Ernest kind of nods, and from like this satchel that he has on his back, he pulls out looks like a key with like a red tag on it, and he tosses it to I would say Sunny. Uh, Sunny catches it, and if you look at it, Sunny, you see that it's a big key, kind of misshapen, not for a door, but for something else. And the red tag has some sort of, like a little speedboat on the back, like on top of it, like a design. If you're headed north, I'd recommend you go via Lake Union. I believe that couple went via that route. Well, let's hope so. I know uh, we've got a victory here, but you got... Your work cut out for you, Sam. That is true, but... And he looks at the people in the cathedral, all helping each other out, getting up. You see... Emmett is now in the group with Cassie, and they're kind of helping people up as well. And he looks back. I believe that our spirit is enough to rebuild. Objects, they can be replaced. Structures can be rebuilt. But we've gained... We've gained heart. And that's not something that comes easily. Hey, uh, when you get back on your feet and you, and you got people that can go out, maybe now that it's safe, make your way to First Hill and look for a guy named Abad. He's uh, with the security. Tell him Sonny sent you. He can help you maybe get supplies, things like that. Help rebuild here. Sam nods. Trade routes would be very helpful now that the routes are clear. Thank you. Ernest. And Ernest kind of turns. Yep. You'll need to show them where the boat is. Just make sure you come back safely. He does a salute. You got it. Uh, Sam, again, addresses the group. We will have some meals ready for you, and when you're ready to leave, we can resupply you with food, water, whatever you need. Nah, you, you keep what you need here. We'll, we've, I think we've got what we need. He, he, he like looks around a uh, to everyone. <laughs> Lance says, a couple of packs wouldn't hurt, though. <laughs> <laughs> Sam yeah, nods. Yeah. Of course, of course, yeah. Med- we'll our medical supplies. Of yeah. Just get us patched up and we'll be good to go. <laughs> our medical supplies are open to you. Much appreciated. Do you have any spikes? Because those were awesome. <laughs> Sam, <laughs> Sam tilts his head. I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by that. We need to find a railroad. <laughs> <laughs> Just rip them out of Buzzsaw. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Anything that was attached or on him is burnt to a crisp. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> for this, for brevity's sake, you receive... Uh, you get three stim packs. I eat them all. And a week's, <laughs> a week's worth of food. Iguana bits and grilled rad roach. But there's quantity 21 in total. I don't know how long you guys want to stay in town. Maybe the night? Yeah, at least yeah. it's a very nice exhausting rest. day. Okay, sure. Makes perfect sense. I would say you all get full health. You each take a moment to 
get your luck back, but I need a description from each of you what you do to get your luck back specifically. So we'll start with Lance. Yeah, I think uh, he he's sleeping inside a cathedral in one of those kind of medical little like little medical beds. Mm -hmm. But before sleeping, he on a on a chair or on a little bench, he neatly like took out his the, the same jersey like just to look at it as he falls asleep. And like look at looking at it first, he gets those those memories of that one time he couldn't do anything and clutching at it. But now that he sees it at a distance, he replays the events of today. And at first it's kind of like the violence of it, but then after that it's kind of like seeing everyone in the cathedral when he ran back to it, being like everybody was safe in there and having Spenny help put out the fires and sort of like helping out in different ways than just like killing those raiders and that sort of helps put his mind at ease. You get your luck points back. Sunny? Uh, the thing that I've been carrying around is uh, pages of a written story. So I think it's like a diary because Sunny has lived a long life and he just kind of like records the events in it. And I think the very first thing that he does is he's like rereading the entry about Garfield and just sort of like going over that. And then he flips to like a blank page um, for today and writes in we did what we could and we saved a piece of the evergreen and then like makes St. Mark's Cathedral and then like does a circle and closes the book. Fantastic. All your luck points return. So Jerry and then we'll finish off with Trish. Jerry uh, feels exhausted and she goes to lay down and she thinks she's well she falls asleep pretty quickly but then she gasps awake as she imagines uh, Buzzsaw lifting her up by her neck and she hears the words, you're gonna die, little girl. And that's what wakes her up. And so she <gasps> gets up and looks around, sees everybody else sleeping and just like goes up to the second story, goes to that balcony. And through with the light of the moon or stars or glow of the <laughs> radiation in the air, um, she takes out from her pocket a little book and opens it up. And on the front is Birds of the Northeast. While looking at this, she opens it up and she thinks about how her dad would show this to her and go over the birds and be like, this is what we're working for, Jer. We're trying to get back to this. We're trying to make this happen again. This is why we're looking for a safe spot for everybody. And she's just flipping through pages. All your luck returns immediately. I can just imagine the dad's voice. This is what we're working for, Jer. And little little girl Jerry just like looking at the pictures like, I like that one. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So where would Trish be? Where would she be sleeping? Inside the cathedral or in the uh, covered market area? Uh, probably in the cathedral after like making sure that the wounded have been taken care of. I picture her like disassembling her weapon and cleaning it. Uh, piece by piece, it's sort of become, you know, after every fight and battle, that's part of her ritual. So Trish is cleaning her weapon inside her little space in the cathedral. I would say it is, unfortunately, some rooms have doubled up, so you're sharing it with uh, a family, a single mother, and two, her two children who are sleeping right now. They're, they're out. And across the room, Trish has her little a lantern, and she is cleaning her weapon. There's a voice in the back of your mind. And there's a very tall African-American man kind of walking around you as you're at this table cleaning it. It's a much younger Trish, maybe in her three years ago, 21, 20, fresh faced. And he's just kind of circling her and you hear his boots hitting wood. Uh, it's in a room that's much more lit up than this one. There seems to be kind of like a generator that's powering these fluorescent lights. And Trish is cleaning it up and putting it together. And she's doing it at a much faster pace than she is in the current timeline. She's doing it quick, so she's being timed. She finishes, puts the gun down, and you hear a click. The gentleman sits down next to her, looks at this little kind of jury-rigged pocket watch or stopwatch. And not bad. You're getting really good at this. But it's not enough to pass the test. 
and he puts the pocket he puts the stopwatch away you know why i picked you trish yeah i think uh trish being the perfectionist that she is she's a little uh upset that she has not yet made the time no not really i i don't why the ranger on the dam that's my dad you followed his orders to a t with a bunch of other troops troopers who you really i if i'm being honest they had no business being on that dam that day and all of them survived including my father if you hadn't stopped that maniac from ripping through you he would have stood there and ripped through the courier he would have ripped through my father and the reinforcements he was bringing so i know that deep down in there there's a heart of a warrior these tests you'll get them it's not a big deal but i don't want you to lose that edge you're a good soldier but you're gonna make an even better ranger and he takes out the, the watch again now one more time and as he clicks it brings trish back to now and the gun is completely built and she has it aimed upwards all the bullets perfectly lined up on the on the little cloth on the table and the woman's voice the mother sitting or laying in her bed kind of very faintly whispers that's very good practice practice and she slowly gets up from her kids puts them to sleep just kind of sits on the edge of the bed facing trish and the table i i've heard of the ncr but I, i've never seen anyone from them here did did you come alone uh trish is gonna put her weapon down back on the table and sort of turn to face this woman no i had a squad with me and we ran into some severely bad luck she puts her hands up i i'm sorry i didn't mean to and she kind of motions her hand like i didn't mean to speak from a place that i didn't understand i'm sorry trish is gonna smile at her no you you didn't know well it's all of our luck that you were the one who was here and helped us i i can't imagine if you and your friends weren't here what we would have done and she looks back at her children my husband he uh he tried to do what you and your friends did last time they came and she looks at the ground for a second and there's this feeling trish gets the feeling of loss of missing a part of yourself your other half that she instantly recognizes and we get a flash of her commanding officer howard the gentleman who was timing her but this time we see them standing at the end of this ridge with a, a, a railing overlooking the mojave and he has his arm around her and they're both wearing their ranger clothes and it snaps back to now and the woman looks up i mean I'm, I'm sure you've heard it all day today but thank you because of you she looks back at her children <laughs> they have a future we have a future and saint mark's it's still standing there's no thanks necessary I'd do it all over again. She smiles and nods. I should I should get to bed. I'll try to keep it down, just gonna do it one more time. She smiles and nods. Good night. And she slowly crawls back to where her children are, embraces them both. And as Trish looks at this small family, she begins to remember the conversations with Howard. About them discussing the future when she and he would end the service and settle down somewhere and our camera pulls out of the small room and then cuts to a long the long hallway of the cathedral as it pans out of the cathedral lifts up and focuses on what is essentially a small neighborhood on a destroyed shoreline right on the coast on the western coast of Lake Union there's a small house as our camera cuts to the interior. It is seemingly destroyed. Nothing of interest as our camera goes through each layer of destruction and grime until we pass through and we see a small red boat 
with an engine. And on the side of the boat, there's a name written in blue paint. And it says, The Way. I guess something's never Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Respect the Crits Wasteland Adventure Fallout Evergreen. If you like what you heard, please consider supporting us by giving us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or whatever platform you use to listen. It's easy, free, helps other people learn about the show, and we love to read your feedback. For more information about the show, visit at Respect the Crit on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or come chat with us in our official Discord server. Jerry is played by Susan Spinader, who you can find on Instagram at Suze Laluz. Lance Burnett is played by Xavier Trudeau Deschen, who can be found on on Twitter at Xavier TD. Trish is played by Jamie Lee Bonez, who you can find on Instagram at Jamie Lee Bones. Sunny Takase is played by me, your host, Ian Duncan, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at iDunks. Our guest GM for this game is Alex Herrera, who you can find on Twitter at AE Herrera or on his Twitch channel, Wade Wolf 10. The original music in this episode is provided with license or permission by a variety of talented artists whose info and credits can be found in the episode notes. Please support them by visiting their platforms to hear more of their work and tell them how much you like their music in our show. Our outro song is Some Things Never Changed by Gavin Dunn. You can hear more of his work on Bandcamp and YouTube at Miracle of Sound. The Fallout 2D20 RPG system is licensed by Bethesda and published by Modifius Entertainment. Special thanks to our friends at Modifius. You can learn more and grab your own copy of the official Fallout RPG by visiting modifius.net slash respect the crit. Special thanks to the team at Fallout Cascadia for use of their music. You can learn more about this incredible, ambitious Fallout 4 mod at falloutcascadia.com. And remember, whatever the system, whether it's a miss or a hit, you always gotta respect the crit. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the wasteland. What happened? Julian, is it baby poop? Oh, drink. Yeah, drink. I think it was just getting some hot Because he came in like this, I thought he had poop on his hands or something, and he was like, oh, no. <laughs> Why would he come in like that? I don't know. Like, oh, look what happened. What you, like, I think parenthood yeah. is, look, look. I've got poop all over my hands. I don't know, dude. Baby I don't know. Poop. Isn't that what new parents are into? Is like <laughs> Baby poop. All right, that's all yeah. I know. They baby do poop, poop a lot. lot. Yeah. They do poop a lot. And it's never the that. same consistency. It's always some like something. It's like a, a, a Cthulhu comes out sometimes. You don't even yeah, know. she's outgrowing her current diaper. So we've been dealing with a lot of blowouts. Oh, no. That's super. That fun. sounds real gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is. I won't go into much more detail, but it is. You don't have to. I can picture just yeah. the, just the <laughs> word just the you word used. Yeah. It evokes. Sounds, uh... <laughs>